All right, so you're looking to learn how to code, but you don't really know what option to choose. You got self-teach, you got boot camps, you got a whole university degree. Which one do you go with? Well, it really depends on what you need to do. If you're just interested in running your own business, learning to code, making a small app or website or game or whatever, you can probably just self-teach yourself that. There's tons of people to learn how to code like that. A lot of people that enter university already know how to develop uh, and they didn't just magically get that knowledge. They just went to Google and YouTube and learned how to do it. That said, there's a couple of tricks there. So for a bit of background, I have a four year degree from a uh, university and I self-taught myself Ruby on Rails while I went for that four year degree, which allowed me to make the YouTube videos that started this channel. The reason why I'm saying that isn't to brag that I have a super expensive receipt because it's kind of cringe that I have it in the first place. It's just to tell you that I sort of have experience with two out of the three methods. I don't have a lot of experience with coding boot camps, but I do have some background with uh, people that have gone to them that have seen some success. So I just wanna talk about those as well because they are a third option. But okay, let's say you're entering into this from scratch. Maybe your end goal is to learn how to make uh, websites using like a, a Mern stack, or you wanna make websites using Ruby on Rails or like make games with Unity. How can you do that? Well, the best way, if you're just looking for quick results, is going to be to self-teach. Now, if you're trying to self-teach, if I switch over my webcam real quick, we can come over here. The best way to start is going to be CS50. The reason being, it is a free class from Harvard, and it is going to cover a wide scope of just generic software stuff, which will give you a very good understanding of the field as a whole. Once you have that, you can then go over to other resources like Free Code Camp or uh, Khan Academy if you want to fill in some more blanks. They even have a uh, computer uh, programming section, which covers a whole host of computer programming related topics. Uh, additionally, if your gen eds are lacking, Khan Academy is also going to be great for that. Maybe you need to like brush up on your math or your history or whatever. Uh, you have those options. That said, once you're done with this, you're then largely going to be left on your own. You're going to have to go to Google or YouTube or Udemy or Udacity for online courses. Uh, so what do you do then? Well, my personal preference, if I'm trying to learn something that is degree adjacent and sort of the way that I learned like uh, my, my Ruby on Rails back, background was I looked for a program that was similar to what I wanted. So in this case, we're going to take a computer science degree. Uh, from Oakland University. So I look up Oakland University degree requirements, which is where they give you a whole bunch of nonsense right here that doesn't matter because like being able to work productively is a, a given. They're just trying to reach a word count or something. Uh, but then if you scroll down, it tells you the uh, classes you have to take and you can skip over all of these because as much as I want to be like, yeah, calculus is important. Fundamentally, you're not going to be using it for your programming unless you're working very heavily on like game related stuff, maybe in general purpose front end development, you don't need it. But what you can do is come down to the CS core section or wherever they talk about the computer science classes that they're gonna teach and just look at what the prereqs are and look at what the topics are. The topics are gonna be the big one. So in this case, this is an intro level class. The topics include member functions, inheritance, polymorphism, and operator overloading. So we'll take polymorphism this is a Java class, but you just use whatever language you want to use. We then go over to YouTube and on YouTube, we then search for polymorphism in, and you can even see here the search results in Java, for example. And then you'll find tutorials on what polymorphism in Java is. They'll explain to you what it means, what uh, inheritance means or operator overloading. And if there's not enough stuff here, another thing you can do is you can go to Google and we'll just search for CS2300. So I'll say Oakland University CSI2300. And you can try to find a syllabus for that class. The reason why you're trying to find a syllabus is because sometimes the syllabus for a class will include information about what else is covered. So here we have the ABET categories that it satisfies. Um, but if you look through the list, sometimes like right here, it covers UML, which is the unified modeling language. So then you go to YouTube and you search for UML tutorials. You search for whatever using arrays means or whatever exception handling is or recursion. And you go from there. So 
a lot of information can be sort of harvested out of these uh, these catalogs in a way where you're not paying for it, uh, but you're learning a little bit more than if you were just blindly trying to uh, follow a, a programming tutorial series on YouTube or whatever. But okay, maybe you don't want to go entirely free. Maybe you're willing to spend a, a couple bucks, in which case another good option is to go to a community college near you. They offer uh, classes at about, like in this case, $400 per class because it's usually four credit hours and this is $100 per credit hour. And they offer both a, uh, what is it? It is a certificate as well as a degree. So the certificate from a community college is gonna look something like this. It's just gonna be like three semesters worth of classes, so a full year. And by the time you're done, this is 34 credits, so it's $3,400, which is pretty reasonable. This will give you a very basic overview of what it is to be a programmer. It, you'll have a professor you can rely on, ask questions of, you'll have other peers you can meet, give you a chance for some networking. If you're interested in going a little bit further, you also have the, uh, where is it? The um, associate's degree in software from a, uh, a community college like this. The associate's degree is gonna give you a little bit more of a well-rounded education. It's gonna tell you to take like writing and uh, gen ed. And like the, the gen ed is debatable for social science, but the actual writing is important. Uh, and the reason is writing is a very valuable skill if you're a software developer, everyone undervalues it. Uh, but as soon as you need to write an email, the one guy in the office that knows how to write, they're probably gonna end up being the one that gets promoted because there's just, it's such a, a core skill that gets overlooked a lot. Um, but like, you know, some of these you're, you're not necessarily gonna need, but they're still good to know. And for like $400, you can't really complain but maybe you want something that's a little bit more in depth than a community college. Well, one thing I will say is if you take these 62 credits from a community college, in a lot of cases, uh, universities have transfer credits from local community colleges, which will allow you to transfer some of these over to a four-year university. In that case, you can end up transferring some of those classes for 400 bucks a pop to a university like this one, where the tuition is $500 per credit, so $2,000 per class. So you're paying a fifth of the class overall by transferring those credits. So that's also something to take a look at is if you wanna transfer those credits to a four-year university and go with the four-year route where you have the like super broad knowledge of the theory of computer science as a whole, and then you just transfer out the credits either that you don't want to take at the university or the credits that uh, you know are just cheaper to take there. The nice thing about a four-year degree is going to be that this gives you a uh, very broad and pool of knowledge to pull from. So if you're in a conversation about databases, runtime optimization, websites, video games, mobile app development, uh, general software engineering business practices, even just like the history of the US pre-1812, there's probably a class you can take for that, which will give you something to talk about and some point of reference. But of course, it's 70, 80, $90,000. That's a lot of money. So maybe you want something similar. Maybe you want to have a bit more targeted approach. In that case, you can go with a coding bootcamp. Now, the way that I like to describe the distinction between the two is the uh, university degree is going to prepare you for a career in computer science and a coding bootcamp is gonna prepare you for a job as a software developer. The uh, Degree gives you the theory, the bootcamp gives you the practical applications. If you're going for a degree, one of the best things you can do is what I did, if you have the time, uh, because some people do have to work to pay for their degree and they won't have the time or the energy, but if you have the time and you're going for a degree, pick up some practical skills while you're doing it, go to YouTube, follow the self-teaching section, try to find something else that's interesting that you can learn, build some side projects. You'll be a much better developer once you finally graduate with your degree. Similarly, if you are going to a coding bootcamp and you have the time, maybe uh, during or after you finish your uh, bootcamp, go and try to learn some of the theory. Good classes for this are gonna be theory of computation, the uh, design and analysis of algorithms and probably programming languages are gonna be some of the more helpful ones here. 
uh, because programming languages, although it sounds like it covers programming languages, what it actually usually covers is like how programming languages work. So like how the, uh, the code you write gets converted down into whatever the lower level language is. Stuff like that can be helpful depending on what you end up working in. And having that point of reference after you finish up with your bootcamp can be very helpful. Uh, and hopefully if you're going to a bootcamp to learn how to code, you at least like learning a little bit. So this won't be as big of an ask. That said, I think we should probably talk about the elephant in the room. Why do people prefer coding boot camps? Well, it's because overall the average cost for coding boot camp is a little bit less than it is for a four year degree. So as you can see here, the median cost or the average cost, however they're, they're uh, stating this, is a $13,580 price tag. So this is just one source. I don't know how accurate this is, but this seems to be around the general uh, ballpark of what I've seen. Um, but a $13,000 uh, price tag for 16 weeks is quite a bit. It's almost a thousand a week. And there's a couple caveats here. The first is if you go to a boot camp uh, with a CS degree, you're largely going to get exposed to a couple different programming languages, hopefully, and you're not really going to be an expert in any of them. If you go for a coding boot camp, it's going to be a very targeted thing. It's gonna, they're going to pick a tech stack for you that they think you have a good chance of getting a job for, and they're going to teach you that. So you're going to be much more proficient with whatever the coding boot camp teaches you. By the time you leave, you'll hopefully, if you go for like a React coding boot camp or Ruby on Rails coding boot camp, you'll hopefully be really proficient with React or Ruby on Rails. You go to an interview, you'll outperform the CS degree person if the topics are about that. Uh, that tech stack. If it's about theory, if the, the job interview starts asking you theory questions, you could be in trouble though. The other part of it is a coding bootcamp. Um, if it ever talks about what it, or not what it can do, but what a university can't do or why universities are bad or what universities don't cover, I would tread lightly uh, because you always want to go with the place that's selling you on what they are good at, not what the competition is bad at. Uh, because then they're really not highlighting their strengths. They're more concerned with trying to tear down everyone else. That's always a bit strange. The other thing is these aren't accredited. So uh, like I could go start a coding bootcamp tomorrow uh, and you would have no guarantee that I know what I'm doing or that I'm teaching what I think I'm teaching. So that's the other thing. You have to be very careful when you do the coding boot camps because it's a lot more research on your part required to make sure that you are getting what you're paying for. Similarly, a lot of them have programs where you can uh, have like a um, employment based repayment plan. So they will only uh, charge you once you get your job. And you want to be very careful with those if you ever sign one of those deals, because the asterisks for those can be brutal. Ones that I've seen are that it is uh, you don't have to pay until you get a job. And then once you get a job, you pay back in installments of a thousand dollars. But let's say you don't get a job, you go down to like the local gas station, get a minimum wage job for 10 bucks an hour or something. That $10 an hour job is considered employment for them. And that will then be a thousand bucks a month coming off of your paycheck, which if you're making $10 an hour, that can be a huge hit uh, to the point of being a really big problem because you still do have to even pay taxes. So be very careful with the coding bootcamp environment. While universities are generally clowned on because a lot of the professors just kind of phone it in and don't want to be there, at the very least, some of them are accredited and that can be some semblance of security that you are at least getting a receipt that will be valuable once you leave. I just wanted to give a, a little bit of an overview of your options. You have the, the coding boot camps. These are going to be accelerated programs that make you an expert in a uh, very specific skill. You have the community colleges, which are a great way to get affordable education. You have the community college transfer credits that can give you a more affordable four year degree program. And then you can, you know, go into a ridiculous amount of debt from there. And then you also have the ability to self teach yourself through YouTube videos, like the ones on this channel or like the CS 50, or you can go to like Udemy or you can go to Udacity or any of the other course platform programs. And you can just search for like uh, object oriented programming and you'll have access to a whole bunch of options there. Again, this isn't going to be accredited though. So do be careful with what you're buying.
But yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I've had a couple people asking about this recently, uh, and hopefully this answers some questions about like what your different options are for each of these uh, different choices. I'm now gonna pass the question off to you. Uh, which of the choices that we talked about would you take if you were starting over? If you went for a degree, would you still go for a degree? Uh, would you go for a boot camp, or would you try to teach yourself? For me personally, I don't think I have the discipline to teach myself again. I feel like I've self-taught myself so much at this point that I just can't do it anymore. I probably would need someone to hold my hand this time. <laughs> yeah, just let me know down below uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.